NFL draft reaction. This is the NFC South today. And we got four teams to hit. We got the Tampa Bay Bucks. We got the New Orleans Saints. We got the Carolina Panthers. And we got the Atlanta Falcons. Um, I guess, uh, any comments that you want to make before we jump into them? Is there is there anything we need to hit beforehand? No. no. Is there a reason? No, no, no. I was just Am curious. I'm, I, I'm trying to buy time because I'm trying to pull up the stupid, <laughs> stupid website oh. so I can look at the... <laughs> It is what it is. NFC South. All right, here we go. Uh, the Tampa Bay Bucks. They uh, they didn't have a ton of picks, but that's okay. Uh, they need their their win total right now is sitting at eight and a half at Vegas. So you know, okay, a lot of people high on them. They've got low Super Bowl odds, all that kind of stuff. However, their win total is still sitting at eight and a half. So it's not crazy. Uh, let's roll through their needs. They needed, and this is for this coming season. I. I swear to God, we have had people killing us in the YouTube comments on each one of these talking about, and it was mostly Rams fans that are, you know, y'all talk about needs, but, you know, we're we're looking into the future two, three years in these picks and blah, blah, it, whatever. It, their needs for this season were cornerback, offensive line, and defensive line. Okay. Now, here's what the Bucks ended up getting, and we'll just roll through them, and then you and I can talk about them. Round one, they got tackled Tristan Wirfs out of Iowa, who Chris believes is the best tackle in this draft, and I think I would agree with him. Round two, they got safety Antoine Winfield Jr. out of Minnesota. He is pretty awesome. I'll I'll say that. uh, that, I think that was a steal at 45. Number 76, round three, they got running back Kashawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt. Round five, they got wide receiver Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota. Round six, Khalil Davis out of Nebraska. And then they had two picks in round seven, They got Chappelle Russell out of Temple, uh, linebacker, and then they got running back Raymond Calais out of Louisiana. That's one of Billy Napier's kids, and all them boys can play. So, um, they they traded up one spot with the 49ers to make sure that they got Tristan Wirfs, and and we can talk about whether or not it was worth uh, trading up one spot or not. I think in order to ensure that the 49ers don't trade with anybody else, that you that can go it. up and get the best tackle in this draft, I think it was a good draft. I think it was a good I'm about to say, I don't think they gave up much. They didn't give up hardly they, anything. They gave up number 14 and number 117 to the 49ers in exchange for number 13 and number 245. So they, yeah. they got that last seventh-round pick uh, in exchange for basically a, a fourth-round pick. Yeah. And that's, that's, not, that's I, I think not so okay. bad. And, and here's the thing. The the reason you do that is because you have good enough intel to know that somebody else is trading up to take that pick. Yeah, and I, I now obviously there was no news about it, but I, I think no. you know you you make that pit, you make that trade just to ensure that it, nobody else does it. There because, was there was no news about it, but this was also the least like news insider um, draft we've ever had. Oh, Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, so, nobody knew so what was going on So just because it wasn't reported, you know, the teams we know it didn't happen with were, you know, the teams where there was a writer that was on the Zoom with these guys going through it and had the information. But that was only like three teams had that. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Uh, second round, Antoine Winfield, I think this is a steal. I, I thought that he was a first-round talent. Uh, there's all the stuff, our Northwestern boys over at Westlot Pirates, they, it, this was one of the kids that was involved in the uh, sexual assault scandal that it, that ended up costing Tracy Clay's his job, basically because he he sided with the kids over the school and blah blah, blah all that kind of mess. Um, yeah, I all that stuff aside, talent. Antoine Winfield was a first round talent. Uh, he yep. is part of what made Minnesota so good last year. Their defense. Uh, while that wasn't what everybody talked about, everybody talked about the wide receivers, whatever, uh, he was outstanding in coverage. He was outstanding uh, in zone. Uh, this is what Pro Football Focus said about him. Uh, former NFL, uh, sorry, former Minnesota safety with NFL bloodlines. Uh, he's an uber instinctive player who also checked boxes at the combine with his four four five second 40-yard dash. Uh, Mike Renner said, I think he can do things that you want from a versatile modern safety. You can tell when a safety just sees things at a different level, and it shows up again and again on Winfield's tape the past uh, season. The injury history is a concern, but I am more than willing to take a shot on him 
at 45. Everything that I'm saying here. Uh, Tim Crosby jumped in on Facebook, by the way, at, and I'm guessing that this is his team here. Uh, he said Ed Reedish. Um, and he's, you know, giving the, the crossed fingers here. Uh, but he said the Bucks got the steal of the draft with Tyler Johnson. Worf and Winfield will produce early. Vaughn is the most underrated pick in the draft. Okay, let's let's kind of tackle these as we go. Keyshawn Vaughn out of Vanderbilt. Incredible speed, incredible running back. Played on an awful team, but you were able to see what he could, what he was capable of. I, I think they kind of got a steal here. He is a a poor man's Clyde Edwards Hilaire, and he may be just as good. He just wasn't on as good of a team. Um, That's right. Yeah, he just we just don't know what he what he did, you know, in that kind of system at Vanderbilt. Bruce Arians, Byron Leftwich, Tom Brady, they're gonna get him the ball. 100%. And if this guy can can catch the ball out of the backfield, that is you know that is James White is what Tom Brady wants. He really doesn't even have to be have the speed that he has, but he he's got to be able to get get open, catch the ball out of the backfield. It's just the most important thing. Yeah. Uh, Pro Football Focus said Vaughn is a solid zone runner with plus speed and burst. He'll get what's blocked and then a little extra. He ranked seventh among all running backs, and he was 146th on PFF's final big board. So if if you look at their final big board, you know, 146, and they took him at 76, you, you can say that they reached here. I don't think this was a reach. This was a need, and this is a kid that fit exactly what they were wanting to do in Tampa Bay. So I'm all over that. We knew they were coming out of this with a running back. I don't know that there was a better running back that was taken behind him. And there's yeah. the thing is, if they had a pick earlier, would they have taken a better running back? Maybe. But but that wasn't available to them. And I don't know that there was a better guy behind them. No, and you and I both preach about the safety position in the NFL. Uh, you needed a safety. You know, you needed some some secondary help. You go get Antoine Winfield. I think yeah. that's a good pick. I think Keyshawn Vaughn, very valuable pick there in the, in the third round. In round five, they got wide receiver Tyler Johnson out of Minnesota. The kid can play. He can absolutely play. He is uh, something else. Uh, is he the real tall receiver they had? I don't. They had they had a couple of receivers there at Minnesota that were really good. One of those dudes was super long. Um, I'm trying to. I'm about to hold on, I'm, I'm looking up his uh, his combine stuff right quick. Let's see, Tyler Johnson. It doesn't have it. Hold on, it's pulling up. Did you know that there was a Tyler Johnson that plays for the Tampa Bay Lightning? So just Tyler Johnson, Tampa Bay is not good. I did not. I, I looked up Tyler Johnson, Minnesota. He is six what foot the hell one. Is that? He's six one, two hundred and six pounds. Uh, so six one's not okay. So he's no, he's not, he's the not super the super long. tall guy I was thinking of. Okay, no, sure not. Uh, but that's okay. So, <laughs> Link, come on, you want to come over here? Here, come here. We got we got family stuff going on today. Good gracious. Uh, so, I don't see a combine as far as speed. I don't see, you know, a- anything crazy. I do know this. That Minnesota offense was unreal last year. Uh, P.J. Fleck is able to... That's right. It is football, buddy. Um, Lincoln's about to go take pictures. So, that's what's going on for anybody that's curious what's happening here. Uh, they're about to leave. So... Um, there's no speed. There's no. Do you want down here? Go get mommy. Go get mommy. <laughs> uh, I, there's no speed on him, but I know he's fast. Uh, let's see. Play strength reminiscent of AJ Brown. Um, let's see. He had a whole lot of school records at Minnesota. I mean, this is all NFL.com stuff. I, I think Tyler Johnson was a steal in round five. I think it was absolutely a steal. Uh, defensive lineman Khalil Davis out of Nebraska. Eh, we'll see. These, these are all flyers. And then Chappelle Russell, linebacker out of Temple. And running back Raymond Calais out of Louisiana to, to wrap it up. I, I'll tell you this. Let's, let's go ahead and talk about uh, whether we like or dislike. I like the Bucks draft. I mean, you could tell they have a plan. They have an idea. We trust Bruce Arians and that staff to be able to put together uh, a, a competitive team. I, I think this was... Uh, I think this was a really good draft. I like what they did. Yeah, I do too. No, I think I think that team is is a pretty complete team. I mean, they're really good at all levels of the game. I mean, this this is part building for the future and 
and building for right now. I mean, you've right. got guys that can contribute immediately. Tristan Works is going to be a day one starter. Walk in the door and play day one. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. And same same with Tristan Wirfs. I think he will he will start game one. So is what it, Tim Tim said. Come on down to Tampa this year. We may go see Tim, and we may go see TJ here in a little while. I mean, we'll we'll see. It all depends on on on, on the COVID, I guess you could say. Uh, let's jump off of them. The next team on the docket, the New Orleans Saints, and I am I'm kind of excited about this one. Ten and a half is their win total. Two full games over the Tampa Bay Bucks. They needed wide receiver help, linebacker help, and defensive line help. Um. Uh, I don't know that they really got any of that with this class. I, you know, this this whole thing. I mean, they traded away basically their entire draft. You know, uh, Tim, by the way, said two miles from the stadium tailgate party. I, hey, I'm down. I like Tampa. I ain't got a problem with Tampa. Bush Gardens, buddy. Let's do this. Let's do this. I, hey, Tim, hit me up on the DMs. Let's uh, let's plan this. We we got to go see Michael in Denver, and we got to go to Tampa. So. <laughs> Hopefully, Chris, you're okay with that. Um, we got a lot of traveling to do this year. The Saints took four draft picks this year. They took uh, Cesar Ruiz out of Michigan in round one, offensive lineman. They took linebacker Zach Vaughn out of Wisconsin in the third round, which was kind of a steal because there were some people talking about him going early second. They got him at 74. Round three, they traded basically their entire draft to trade up and get tight end Adam Troutman out of Dayton who nobody knows anything about. If anybody says that they watched Adam Troutman play a full game of football, you are straight line through your teeth right now. Uh, he, he's he got all the measurables. He looks good. If you look at his highlights, sure. Why not? But I don't know. And then in round seven, now this has become a big NFL thing. Have you seen all the stories that have come out about this? About, uh, about Tommy Stevens? So apparently yeah. the Panthers had talked about, you know, signing or... or the Saints thought that the Panthers had been talking to Tommy Stevens, that they were going to sign him as an undrafted free agent. So the Saints traded back into the seventh round. They took Tommy Stevens, quarterback out of Mississippi State, in the seventh round. And they took him in hopes of trading him to Carolina. You know, blah, blah. It, basically they took him because somebody in their division wanted him and had already worked out some kind of a deal as an undrafted free agent before the draft was done. So then the Saints traded in and just took him anyway, even if they didn't really want him. Because, I mean, the Saints have already got Jameis and Taysom Hill and Drew Brees on the roster. No, nobody's going to do that either. Like, you're keeping another team from getting them, but you're not. At some point in time, you've got too many quarterbacks on the roster. So now yeah. you have four quarterbacks on the roster that you can't carry. Right. All right. If you waste a roster spot on, and as soon as you designate him for the practice squad, anybody can go get him. Yeah. Right. So um, you're either going to carry four quarterbacks and give up a, a a roster spot of the 53 man. That's that's tough to do, brother. Oh yeah. Or, and ben, ben on YouTube said they now have three and a half quarterbacks. So <laughs> yeah. yeah, but but I I think that's a that's a this is a this is a a thing that I don't like at all. They've this is a team that's drafted really well the last couple of years. And, uh, and and they've built their team in a pretty impressive way, so it's yeah. hard to question them. But I just I just disagree with worrying about what your other teams in your division are doing. You make your team better, and don't don't play these games. Don't dick around. Take who you need to take, because what are you going to get back for him? You're not going to trade him in the division. That's just not going to happen. And they're not going to give you any real asset. For a guy that's a unproven. Pick. There's yeah. a reason that he's an undrafted free agent. They want to see what he looks like when they work him out and, you know, whatever. So, I just disagree with that. Uh, Michael said Carolina will eventually get him if they want. They're not going to keep him on the roster. And then Matt said, does Hill really count as a quarterback? Ben responded to him and said, half a quarterback. Yeah, at Taysom Hill, you know, I don't know that they're actually going to list him. But you're as using a, a 53 man roster spot for him every yeah. sa- uh, every every Sunday. That's the the, the reason this is a, such a big deal is because it is uh, against league policy to make deals with uh, draftees before the draft is over. That's why the Saints took him. It's the whole thing's goofy. Like obviously, we know that teams make deals with players before the draft is done. Otherwise. 
they wouldn't have contracts done immediately after the draft. As soon as, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, these guys know if you get, but here's the thing, telling a kid, if you don't get drafted, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't think there is. Having either. a deal in place, but if you don't get drafted, tells them we like you, but we're not going to draft you. Uh, we, we like you, but we may not have enough draft picks. Yeah. Well, I that mean, just says they're not going to draft them. If you're working out an undrafted deal with them, you're not drafting that kid. That's a, that's a very good point. So the Saints, uh, four picks. Um, you know, Ruiz, like, I, let, let's talk about the, the ones that they did get. Let, let's so leave the Tommy. first two picks I like. The other two I don't know anything about. Well, the, the quarterback pick I know, I, that was a dumb yeah, pick. Yeah, Tommy Stevens, like, he, he – I mean, he dealt with a and, ton of and injuries. I also don't think Tommy Stevens is projecting to be a good quarterback in the NFL. Either. No, I don't think so. so. I, I think he might be a Taysom Hill kind of guy. Uh, Michael said, I don't get the Caesar pick. With Breeze having a couple years left, you'd think they'd get immediate help. I, I think they feel like Ruiz could be immediate help. Yeah. I just don't see it. Um, you know, I, I think, like, here's the thing. The measurables, like, you, you don't see it with the measurables. But if, if you watch the tape of Michigan... Like, Cesar Ruiz is a beast, and he comes to work on every single play, yep. even if he's not that pretty, you know, 6'5", 340-pound, you know, whatever guy. He is still a stud, and he just... It, I, I, I Part of me really likes that underdog card. They got a lot of underdog kind of guys on this team, and he kind of fits into that mold. I think I kind of like that pick. I, the linebacker, Zach Bond, out of Wisconsin... Yeah. Like it, pick. that's an incredible value pick. Like incredible value. to get him in the third round is ridiculous. I think that was a really good pick. So those I think are great. The the tight end Adam Troutman. I don't know the first thing about him, but nope. if if they liked him enough to trade the rest of their draft to go up and get him, you know I'm a I'm a trust Sean Payton and that bunch to make sure so, that, uh, that so this I, is the right I guy. I heard I heard some logic by about t- Sean Payton trading all those because they were all sixth and seventh round draft picks that they traded. It was a bunch of them, but they didn't give up anything that wasn't a sixth or a seventh round pick. Okay, yeah. so the logic behind that is Sean Payton said we're always going to be able to pick up another sixth round pick or a or seventh round pick because. The, the Vikings aren't going to be able to sign all those guys. And all these other teams are going to drop guys that they drafted to. And yeah, then I mean, we the, can the just Jags decide. had, what, 15 picks? I mean, it, yeah. they're not going to so, sign so, them so, so they're saying that the concept of if there's a guy available that you want and all you're doing is trading large volumes of late-round picks and there's nobody late that you've got your eye on that you want to take a flyer on, just – just deal the picks, get the dude you want, because all of these other teams are going to cut guys. Oh, yeah. And when they do, you don't have to cut anybody. You'll actually need two or three more guys, and you'll be able to go pick those guys up for nothing. It's a very smart way of looking at it. Uh, ben said, this is a good question. Why is everyone getting labeled as Taysom Hill? First it was Jalen, now it's Tommy Stevens. Uh, look, it. It, I don't know Hang that on. Taysom Hill brought a whole lot to the table anyway. That, my question is this, not why is he – I'm asking a different question than this. Not why is everyone getting labeled as Taysom Hill. Why do we think he's that valuable for a guy – you're going to pull your quarterback, the most important player in all of football, off the field to run a gadget play with this other guy that does something different – Yes, he makes defenses worry and practice and spend time working on things that they don't normally have to work on. You know what? I would rather, if you told me, Chris, you got to play the Saints, but don't worry, five plays in that game, they're going to pull Drew Brees off of it. Now, because of that, we got to spend time trying to, to stop this other kid, and here's the things that he does differently. I would be happy with that because those are five plays that Drew Brees can't make a big play. Yeah. Hundred percent. I just you. don't understand that the math doesn't make sense. Bill Belichick used to have a rule. Now he obviously changed it a couple of years ago, but he used to have a rule. They used to run a lot of trick plays where they ran, you know, the the, the flea flickers, all stuff where the you know the end arounds, the receiver or a running back would throw the football or whatever, and none of them worked very well. And finally, Bill said, "Listen, we have Tom fucking Brady. Nobody throws the football but Tom." That, yeah. That's my rule, and I'm done. 
And no, then, no, you know, he did have Julian throw five no, touchdown that's what passes. I'm saying. But, they changed that only for Julian. But even still, they kept Tom on the field. One, one trick play, but you know, you're not even running trick plays with Taysom. You don't even have the element of disguise because yeah, Breeze comes off. So we know exactly what you're doing. I'm I gotta get an answer on this. Michael jumped in and said another system quarterback. Now are you talking about Breeze or you're talking about Taysom Hill? Like it's surely surely you ain't talking about Breeze. Breeze is unbelievable. Like I I will say this. He he kind of helped invent the spread with Joe Tiller at uh, at Purdue, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, Taysom Mills' contract, by the way, that he just signed. Um, signing bonus, he gets a guaranteed four million this year, four million next year, guaranteed. His base salary, ten point seven million in twenty twenty one, only eight hundred forty one thousand this year. Uh, his dead cap space for this season. Is sixteen million next year. It is, or sorry, cap hit this season four point eight million. Next year it is sixteen point one five nine million dollars. Is he worth sixteen million dollars to your cap next year? You do realize Andy Dalton just signed for three million dollars, right? I'm just like, if he becomes the starter, he gets seven. I don't get it. Uh, Michael's talking about Hill. This is a okay. team that's really bad at cap space, by the way. If you look at the Saints every year, they're one of the – they just keep living on borrowed time. I keep thinking that eventually this is a team that's going to go from 12, 13 wins, compete for a Super Bowl, to falling off a cliff because at some point in time, the cap comes for all of us. It's like yeah. the government and taxes, baby. They at One day you're going to have to pay – they're going to pay, and, and they can't keep signing these contracts the way they are and living the way they do, but they do. I've been saying that for six, seven years. I know. One I, day, I mean, it's, the, the, they're going to have to let everybody go. It's it's really don't. been the last four years, like four years it's straight, been we've been trying to figure out how in the world are they fielding a competitive team. And right now, they've got a, they've got a great roster right now. Like, well, I'm going to tell you how. They have drafted better than anybody in the. I, I do believe over the last four years, they have hit more on their draft picks and busted less on their draft picks than anybody else. So, so we trust their uh, their draft. Let's go ahead and talk about whether we not or uh, whether or not we like their draft. C.J. Ruiz, Zach Bond, and Adam Troutman. We're gonna keep I like Tommy the Stevens first off two, of it. But everything else I know about this team, I, I'm gonna say no. That doesn't mean that I'm right, but. I, I don't like this at all. It, I love Braun, and I, you know. Yeah, Zach Braun, uh, Cesar, I think I, I think I like Cesar Ruiz. I think I like this draft. I, th- I mean, it's only three picks. It's hard to it, say. I mean, you, it's they don't have as so many picks, bites at the you apple. you got to take into effect all those guys they gave up to get the four picks. Yeah, uh, Ben jumped and in. And I hate one, one of their picks I think they completely wasted. I think they just threw away. Yeah, that's Ben said. Why would the Saints draft a Taysom Hill when they literally have the Taysom Hill? Have Taysom Hill, and they've got him locked up for at least two years, and they can't get rid of him. They can't move him. Yeah, but I mean, the dead cap is. I mean, it's absurd. Like even if you were to cut him, yeah. Like so, it, so God, it out of so the much. four picks, one we don't know anything about, and the other one we openly dislike. How on earth can I say I like that? And the I mean, one I don't know I, anything I, about, you gave up like seven picks to get that guy. It, but, but you admitted like they didn't, they didn't, they were, it was but all you guys who would take flyers. I would rather, I'll tell you this. I would rather take flyers. Philosophy. That's his philosophy. I would rather have control over the flyers I'm taking because if you get the Donovan Peoples Jones, if you get the, 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 the Kenny Hill or Hamlin or whatever, the guy from Ohio State, if you hit on those guys, then you're not cutting them. Those guys aren't getting cut. You're cut. You're getting guys that are getting cut from other teams. I would rather have control over the guys I bring in and let me do the cut. That's, I, yeah, I'm with you. Okay, I can understand. I, this dude better turn into Gronk. He better turn into Jimmy right. Graham, or he ain't worth it. Let me before we close off of the Saints. Let me look and see what his measurables were. Adam Troutman out of Dayton. Uh, he is six foot five. Let's see. He's a kind of an older guy, from what I understand. I think he's a fifth-year senior, right? Yeah, redshirt senior, six-five, two hundred fifty-five pounds. Um, okay, you know he ran a four-eight forty-yard dash. Uh, 
18 bench press, 34 and a half vertical jump, 114 broad jump, blah, blah, blah. blah. Uh, three cone drill, 6.78. That's pretty good time. 20 yard shuffle or 20 yard shuttle. Underwear Olympian. This is what you take late. This is not what you give up your whole late for, 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 uh, for one guy. I mean, if he, if he turns out, then the draft is a win. If he didn't, then okay. As a, Maui looks yes. good there, man. A very majestic looking. Getting big. He is getting big. Good gracious. He's, he's like, not real happy that I'm not giving him attention. No, nah, I can I can tell. I can he's understand. Telling me we're hey, going too long. Lincoln was the same way. I understand. So we we he's are just in, quiet. This 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 one don't make any noise. Now you got that right. The other one just yells all the time. Good lord. Uh let's move in. Let's talk about the next one. The Carolina Panthers. Their win total for this season with uh, new coach Matt Rule, new offensive coordinator Joe Brady, six is their win total. That is the lowest in the NFC South. They needed defensive line help, safety help, and cornerback help. We understand that is for this season. Let's go ahead and discuss exactly what they drafted this year, and they are the first team in quite some time to take nothing but defensive players in the draft. Now, they, they had seven picks. That's it. They had two second rounders, no third rounders, but then they had a pick in the first, and the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. So let's uh, let's just kind of run them down right quick, and then we'll see what happens. They got defensive lineman Derek Brown out of Auburn. They got edge rusher Yeter Gross Matos out of Penn State. They got safety Jeremy Chen out of Southern Illinois. They got cornerback Troy Pride Jr. out of Notre Dame. Safety Kenny Robinson out of West Virginia. Defensive lineman Bravion Roy out of Baylor, and then cornerback Stantley Thomas Oliver out of Florida International. All defensive guys. Um, Derek Brown, I will say, I we were fans of this pick early on, and, and I thought, even I thought today, he, like I think we're gonna look back in three years or five years, he could be the best defensive player to come out of this draft. Yeah. I think defensive linemen have a chance to make a bigger impact on the game early in their career than almost any other position, you know? Like, safety might be a close second to that because I think safety can uh, can kind of change the way that the game is played. But, I mean, you you got you got a defensive lineman, you got an edge rusher in Yuter Gross Matos at number 38 in the second round uh, out of Penn State who, you know, some people were questionable about his measurables and blah, blah, blah. Look, the guy produced at Penn State, like we'll, we'll see what happens at, at the NFL level. But I, I got faith in him. And then safety Jeremy Chin, I mean that it comes out a, a long line of NFL, you know, legacy. Uh, let's see what is a uh, Pro Football Focus. Yeter Gross Meadows, uh, while his grade did not or did improve every year of his career at Penn State, Gross Meadows never had high end production at the collegiate level. He finished the 2019 season ranked 32nd among qualifying edge defenders. In overall grade, that was 84.7. There's an awkwardness in the way Gross Matos rushes the passer that is tough to ignore. His lack of dominance, despite dominant tools, gives us pause. And then they said they uh, they traded picks number 69 and 148 to move up to 64 to draft former SIU safety Jeremy Chin. Chin has peak athletic tools for the safety position, but he's far more athlete than football player at this point. Carolina has that defined box role, so he'd be the best box safety in that defense. If you're banking on him... Ba- uh, being a box safety, well, they had some typos in this. Uh, I'm not sure he's necessarily your guy. I don't think he brings it to the table. I was hesitant on him because of the competition he played at Southern Illinois, and that tentativeness at the position, a guy that plays below his athletic traits, is worrisome. I look at this differently than PFF does. Uh, that is all that that Matt Rule has done for years, is draft athletes and teach them to play the way that he wants them to play. So, yep. if you got a fantastic athlete, you teach him to do what you want him to do. This is the Bill Belichick way of going about it. Um, let's see. <laughs> Hold on. I, I got to get caught up on the uh, on the quotes. Hold on. Uh, or not quotes. Sorry. The uh, the chat. Tim Crosby said, how does crab leg get better in uh, New Orleans? We've already been over the Jameis stuff. We'll talk about Jameis again before the season. I, I promise. Uh, McKinnon said, I don't know how no one tried picking up Nick Coe from Auburn in the draft. I believe he signed as an undrafted free agent. But damn, I think he's gonna he's good to be undrafted. There were a lot of really good undrafted players. This was a a very deep draft. Okay. Yep. Um Michael said favorite pick was Jeremy Chen, Atwater's nephew, wanted him to wear number twenty seven for Denver. Yeah, when you got other NFL teams that wanted the player, you drafted the right guy. 
Like, he's an athlete. He might not have shown a whole lot at Southern Illinois, but, I mean, it, would anybody have watched? Would anybody have seen what he did at Southern Illinois? I mean, he's an athlete. Like, he's a period an athlete. And then Tim said, you both love to rule in college. I hope he sucks in the pros. Um, <laughs> but that's coming from a Bucks fan. Uh, McKinnon said, I love the Panthers draft. I really do. They don't have any major needs on offense, and they took exactly what they wanted and needed hard to beat that kind of draft. Yeah, they took all defensive guys. They needed a ton of help on defense. I mean, if you look at their needs, defensive line, safety, and cornerback, they needed defense. So they went and they drafted defense. That's the smart way to go about it. And what I was saying about Rule, Tim, the reason why we loved Matt Rule in college is he could take athletes. He, He found guys that fit a certain specific measurable that he wanted, and he brought them in, and then he developed them. He taught them to play the position that he wanted them to play and that they would be most successful at. And I think he's going to be able to do the same thing in Carolina. Jeremy Chin in the third round, he is an incredible athlete. He may not have shown a whole lot at the safety position at at Southern Illinois, but as a box safety, he could be incredible. And I think you can do it. Now, he may not be the first year, obviously, but he's a third-round pick. Who gives a shit right now? Like, you're developing him over... Over the years, I think this is a fantastic draft by the Carolina Panthers. I like, I like what they did here. Um, I mean, obviously, you got some flyers that you took, you know, late in this around five, six, seven. But you, you got guys, you got athletes that you can teach to play the way that you want them to play. And I, I think that's what Bill Belichick does, right? Yep. Yeah. No, I, I, he made it clear. In, if you watch the draft, he said we addressed everything on offense in free agency, which means we had to use draft capital on defense. And he, he made it clear, we got to hit on some of these guys. It's not, it's not 100%. It's not as secure as signing a free agent who you've seen be proven at it. But it doesn't cost you nearly as much. And, uh, and so, you know, it's a smart move. He, he needed defense. He went all defense. And uh, they're going to bring them in, and they're going to work them out, and they're going to see what they can do. I trust this coaching staff to be able to develop the I players that they've got. That's, I, I mean, too. period. And, I mean, obviously, we'll see. It's a different level when you get to the NFL as opposed to in college football. Uh, but in college, you're taking kids from, you know, high school and, and teaching them to be men at the same time that you're trying to teach them to be, you know, football players. It's a little bit different, but I, I like what they did. I, I like this. I like this draft. Like I, that that's the fun part about not having to like put a letter grade on it. I can just tell you if I liked it or not. Tim jumps in with the yeah. thumbs up. Thumbs up Tim, we appreciate that. Um yeah, I I like this. I you know, it 50%, you know, one way or the other. I I'm going over 50%. I like the uh, the Panthers draft even if it was well, all defense. And he, here's the thing I like about going all defense in today's world in the draft. I wondered do they think there's market inefficiencies? I fully believe that the draft offensive players do get overdrafted because they're flashy and they've got the names that everybody wants and needs. It, th- there's no reason that Brown should have been sitting there. There's just okay. not, but quarterbacks are too valuable. Um, you know, offensive linemen in this draft or too like, it's just, it's not a sexy position. And, he should have been taken second or third in this draft. And that's just, that's just the truth. Yeah. Um, but, but I, I think, I think you find more market inefficiencies drafting defensive players than you do offensive players because less defensive players get drafted. Yeah. That's hundred percent true. hundred percent true. Last up, we've got the Atlanta Falcons. Seven and a half wins is their current Vegas total. They needed cornerback, linebacker, and edge rusher. So, basically, they needed defensive help, and that's 100% true. They they got the weapons on offense. They got pieces. Um, McKinnon already jumped in on Facebook. Hard to believe there's a division in which Matt Ryan is the worst QB1 in the division. Definitely excited to see how the season goes for the division as a whole. Um, look, it, I, I think it's between Matt Ryan and, and Teddy. You know, at, like, Teddy's I, not I, proven yet. Let's be yeah. real careful before you give it up to Teddy. Now, I kind of hope he is the worst because I'm not a fan. But. Hey, yeah, you're you're not a fan of the Falcons. I like the Falcons though. I I don't have a problem with the Falcons. Um, 
Now, I, I will gladly make fun of them just the way that I will everybody else, but that's okay. Incredibly boring football team. I See, I think they're exciting, but I, I think it's no, exciting no, in a different kind of way. There's nothing exciting about them. Because I, I think they can beat anybody, and I think they can get housed by anybody, and that's that's what makes them exciting. But um, all their games are boring. All their games are terrible. And they were last year for sure. Uh, Every Falcon game you watch is just a snooze fest. Matt Ryan is a very good quarterback. Matt Ryan is really boring. Yeah, Matty Ice uh, hadn't really lived up to the name a whole lot, uh, other than the uh, the Super Bowl season. But, I mean, he had massive yards last year. And just, you know, defense was awful. Uh, Tim said, can they bring Cam back into uh, backup Teddy? Uh, no, Carolina will not be bringing Cam Newton back. Uh, McKinnon, outside of Davidson, I'm not super happy with the Falcons draft. He's a damn stud. Uh, Terrell was a bad pick that I'm hoping I'm just dead wrong on. They're touting him like the next coming of corners, but I don't drink that much Kool-Aid. Uh, Michael said Atlanta got pass rush help after struggling the last couple of years, and they took a pick for Chris. Yeah, they did. They did. Um, you know, we'll see. Uh, Carlos Gomez jumps in on YouTube. Good to see you, Carlos. I had AJ Terrell as a reach for the Falcons. I had Jalen Johnson, Gladney, and Trevon Diggs as better prospects. 100%. 100%. Yeah, um, and, and I'm also the guy that says, why the hell are all these cornerbacks going so early? There was elite-level safety there, elite-level linebacker play there. And there were better just, cornerbacks. And better cor- and better players at the position you took, and I'm just leery of that position. So. Let's let's roll through what they took. Uh, round one, they, uh, they had six total picks. Round one, A.J. Terrell, cornerback out of Clemson. Round two, defensive lineman Marlon Davidson, who we both love out of Auburn. Uh, round three, center Matt Hennessy out of Temple, who is a beast, even if you hadn't watched him a whole lot. We, you and I yep. both watched a lot of Temple games last year. Uh, that, that guy can change the game, or at least he did for, uh, for the Owls last year. Well, the last year. two, three years, yeah. Uh, oh. Round four, linebacker Mikel Walker uh, out of Fresno State. Round four, safety Jalen Hawkins out of Cal. Round seven, punter Sterling Hoffreiter out of Syracuse. And that is what Michael was talking about. Taking a punter with a pick. What are you doing? Whatever. Um, it, look, first round, A.J. Terrell, cornerback out of Clemson. There were better cornerbacks, we feel like, that were on the board. Now, we can be absolutely wrong, and we have no problem admitting when we are wrong. If A.J. Terrell comes in and lights up the league, then that's fine. But at 16, that was a bit of a reach, and there is absolutely zero way that he was higher on their horizontal board than C.D. Lamb was, who went in the next pick. And I understand you already got wide receivers. You already got your offense is set. But as far as value goes, if you are a smart franchise, you take the best player in that position. C.D. Lamb was a top 10 pick that fell to 17. You had the 16th pick. You had the option to go get him. Imagine an offense where you've got Calvin Ridley. Or trade that pick to somebody who's willing to give you a fortune for C.D. Lamb. Because you can get A.J. Terrell later. Yep. I don't understand it. Either way, round two, they got Marlon Davidson, defensive lineman out of Auburn. We we were both big on those two guys out of Auburn. Uh, yeah, no, the, the, those two yeah. boys are going to be massive NFL stars. And, they and the just fact, are. The fact that you get Davidson at forty-seven, I mean that I'll give him. I'll give him that. He, here's here's I, I I don't know why he fell. I thought it was. I love Brown. Brown is the elite of the two of them, but I don't know that he's that much better than Davidson. Uh, Day two, this is what PFF said about Marlon Davidson. He said, Davidson falls closer to the tweener side of the spectrum or defensive lineman than the versatile side. His flexibility is impressive for a bigger dude, but he doesn't have the burst to threaten NFL tackles. Bulking up and kicking inside looks like his best bet. He is No, he's probably going to play inside, but I kind of assume that all along. He's a largely... uh, or he is largely a projection considering he didn't play a ton of reps along the interior at Auburn. That is just Oh, God, crap. I don't care about all that. Well, he didn't play that in college, he so said, but he now has... will he do good at it? You know what he's really good at? Taking the guy in front of him, pushing him on the ground, and making a tackle. Uh, he, they said uh, he has all the tools to offer a high-end production at the position in the NFL. Uh, Michael said 100% right, Chris. Safety, if elite, can cover and play the run. They can play three positions. I think Simmons uh, had a quote about that prior to the draft, 100%. Uh, McKinnon, who replied to Tim, Tim said Atlanta always gets one solid pick. The rest are usually awful. McKinnon said, amen to that. Been a Falcons fan since 04. Nothing but rarely enjoy the draft. Um, let's let's talk about that third-round pick as well right quick. Hennessy, uh, the center out of Temple, who we just talked about, can play on the move. 
That's a coveted skill at the center position today. We worry about his high cut, slight build, holding up at center against power. He ranked fourth among centers and 103rd among all players on PFF's big board. Yeah, I mean, it, you, you might have reached a little bit, but look, that was a position of need, and it, I, I think he's going to play. I, I like Hennessy. He, I understand yeah. when you talk about measurables and all that kind of crap. I, I get it. But I also look at the players playing football. And if they are good football players, I trust that they will be able to translate, for the most part, to the NFL. It, it, maybe I'm wrong on that. Do you feel the same way? No, I, I look at – so for offensive linemen, if you're not going to be one of the elite guys and you're looking at second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth-round guys, what I care about is how many snaps did you play in college? How many years were you a starter in college? Because if you're a three-year starter in college, i got to assume that I can figure out something for you to do in the NFL. Yeah. And I, I, I just do because you're good enough to, to take the beating, take the coaching, and keep your starting job for – Long periods of time. I just got to figure it out. Now, I'm very skeptical of guys that are smaller schools, don't compete with a lot of other people, come in, have one really good season, and don't have all the size measurables. Those are all the red flags. Now, I don't I don't give yeah. a shit. I ain't touching that kid. Yeah, I understand. I, I mean, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you 100%. Uh, rounds four through seven, they got two fourth rounders and one seventh rounder. We're, we're not going to touch on the punter. At, the kid at Syracuse... Had a lot of chances to punt this year. We'll just say that. So obviously he can uh, he can look good on a on a highlight reel. Uh, but in the fourth round, they took linebacker Mikael Walker out of Fresno State, and they took safety Jalen Hawkins out of Cal. Obviously, big fans of Cal's defense. What Justin Wilcox did there was ridiculous, uh, and the safeties that he had were able to play. They were good. They're good players. If you can get that kid at at one thirty four, one hundred percent. And then uh, Mikael Walker out of Fresno State. Yeah, Tedford did not win with offense the last two seasons. Their defense at Fresno State was borderline ridiculous. Like, I I could not... It, if there was one thing that you would have told me about Jeff Tedford coming back to college football, that would be it. It's it, 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 just the most ridiculous thing you could possibly say is Jeff Tedford is going to win with defense for two straight years. That's it. Like, I... I I don't know what else to tell you. Jeff Tedford's defense was unbelievable. Um, I just, you know, McKinnon said, I almost never get to enjoy one of my college guys play for one of my two pro teams. I think they just killed the Davidson pick. I know I already said it, but damn, I'm excited for him to rise up. Yeah, if you're an Atlanta Falcons fan, be excited about Davidson. Be excited about Hennessy, even. Um, you know, A.J. Terrell, hope for the best. Just hope for the best. Like, I, we think he reached. But, I, I, I mean, who's to say? Like, I, 16 just seemed way too early. And and we weren't the only ones that believed that. Um, oh, no, yeah, there's a lot of people that thought that. And I just, I yeah. just you know, that oh, was just too crazy. much. I'm, I'm just leery. I'm leery of some of those Clemson defensive kids because they played virtual high school teams for 80% of their college career. Maybe 90% yeah. of the college career. Now, they look great against Tua and that Alabama offense in, in 2018, but against Joe Burrow and that bunch. But they wasn't even just Joe Burrow. Ohio State cut them up first half of the game. Yeah, I mean they they couldn't they didn't score touchdowns on them, but they moved the football though. They had a ton of yards. Uh, Yeah, they had a ton of yards, but they didn't score. I mean Ohio State only had twenty three points for the entire game. I mean that's that's on them. You know, like we can go rehash that again if we need to. But look, Ohio State cost themselves the ball game. Um, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about AJ Terrell being able to stop a receiver. No, he he really wasn't able to. And when he went up against good receivers, he didn't stop them. Yeah, he looked great against you know the crap coming out of Florida State, Miami's garbage offense. Sure. Yeah. Uh, by the looked way, like stars. Go ahead and give applause. Restream. Let us know. We uh, we received a hundred messages today on the restream chat. Thank you guys, obviously, for always jumping in here. Fantastic stuff as always. Uh, yeah, I, you know. I'm I'm going to say that I like the Falcons draft. Now it's not my favorite draft, but I, I like what they did. Other than that first round pick, um, you I know, I didn't like it because I didn't love anything other than the second round pick. I I think you know the fourth round picks with the kid out of Fresno State and Cal. I I like those. Obviously, you know, you were going defense with a lot of this. You you drafted a cornerback, you drafted a defensive lineman, you drafted a linebacker, you drafted safety, and and you hope for the best. 
right? And these are all kids that, that I believe can end up being good NFL players. I, I like it. I don't love it, but I like it. So, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Um, with that said, who do you think ended up winning this draft out of this division? I think the Bucks did. I think you're probably right. Yeah. I think, I think they got the best. Right. Oh, never mind. They didn't have the best player. I think Brown's the best player in the draft. I think they got the most um, high end talent. I do too. I do too. I think the players they took are going to, to just, they're, I, I think they took less flyers. I think they took guys that are going to produce and are going to be productive NFL players. Yeah. And I think some of these guys we're going to see get cut in the next year or two. Uh, Michael jumped in. He said, just want to say thanks, fellas. You give us the platform to chat and have these conversations. I definitely enjoy it and appreciate it. McKinnon said, I'm glad one of us liked it as a Falcons fan. So, yeah, I'm with you. I understand where you're coming from. I, I don't think it was, like I'll say this, I don't think it was terrible. Like it's... Well, no. At, at, at some point in time, somebody's got to be the loser. If all if all four teams did good, then I I will. Worse. Uh, so, so who do you think won the draft? I think I think the Bucks won the draft. You I know think, what? They didn't lose the draft. They didn't lose the Saints. Lost the draft. I I think the Saints. Yeah, I Saints think the Saints lost. Saints one hundred percent lost the draft. They took four picks. They gave up a lot of picks to get a pick that we don't know anything about. I don't know anything about. And, and, and the first and they, two picks and were... And they took a wasted pick completely just to piss somebody else off. That's stupid. Yeah. I, I, petty I, bullshit never wins. I don't, you know, I I, I like the I like some of the players that the... I, I How about this? Instead of liking, I understand what the Saints were trying to do in this draft, aside from that seventh-round pick. Their their first three picks in the draft was Zach Vaughn and, uh, and, and Cesar Ruiz... And Adam Troutman, I, I understand where they were going. I don't necessarily like it. I, I think they lost this NFC South draft. Um, and I think the Bucs won it. Like, I, I think the Bucs are set up better long-term. I think they got players that are going to be around longer. So, yeah, you know, and then, and then the Falcons and the Panthers, I mean, they're right there in the middle. We'll just see what happens. So, who knows? I would say the Panthers did better next after the Bucs, but. I, yeah. They got the single best player out of the draft. If I had to rank them, I would I would go Bucks, Panthers, Falcons, and then Saints. That's the way I do. Yeah, I'm 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 okay with that. I'm okay with that. So, I'm good with it. All right, we'll is there anything on. else that we need to hit on today? Nope, that's it. Let's get out of here. That Let's is it. All right, guys, this was a longer one than uh, than usual. Again, we appreciate all of you jumping in on the chat. This has been fantastic. You guys are wonderful. Share the show out with your buddies. Tell your friends about it. Leave a nice comment and a nice review on the podcast. Make sure you are subscribed. As always, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we will see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out.